Hello guys. Welcome. Welcome to another episode of Rister Daily Trade Recaps and Teachings. All right guys, another bullish day, another bullish day. There was um, there's so many plays today you could literally have picked anything and traded it, but um, we'll cover some main plays that we did in the community and some of the main uh, swings that have been working and we'll look at why what has changed today, right? What has changed? What was what was the catalyst today? and what is the market daily weekly charts telling us we'll do some little analysis and see how are we in a swing environment now right how the doom gloom is behind us you know we always we always live in the present right and we see what the what the system is telling us we'll review everything do a general analysis of the market if you had missed some swing longs we'll talk about that that you know how could you rejoin the trend what can we expect next what's wix doing so bunch of things to cover so we'll cover um, a few selected trades and then we will uh, grow, go through everything. All right, guys, uh, before I start, let's do, do, a, do a quick introduction. All these uh, trade recaps and teachings are from any trades that we do in community. Any ideas I share on the Twitter, any ideas I share with you guys on the YouTube. Yeah, these all are from there, right? I don't trade all the setups. I trade few setups. I, you know, I discuss what setups I trade, but a lot of the trades are being tra uh, traded by hundreds of traders in our community on our trading floor. So we discuss those as well. But we will discuss all our game plan, you know, what we had on plan. Most of these trades are already on our game plan. What most of these trades, we already are ready for these setups in the pre-market. So we do not trade random. We trade repeatable setups. My repeatable system, thousands of traders across the world use it consistently to make consistent trades. So, um, and we have repeatable setups. So system is uh, how you trade, setup is what you trade, right? So we have fixed setup that we trade. We always uh, have our fixed repeatable setups that we trade. We do the same exact things. And uh, that's what we'll talk about what was the setup that we traded. So this was our game plan this morning. Uh, my team creates this game plan. We have Alta, Snow, Spy, QQQ, the market. We had, uh, we'll talk about the, the, the retail sale and uh, how the recession fears came down and the market was bouncing on that so we have a bunch of other plays earning plays we have um, upgrades downgrades we have news plays we have ipos so we define these you know different uh, different plays and we choose all of them will not trigger some of them will trigger give us a nice setup so we'll take it if some of them don't trigger they don't show a setup even after moving through the price we don't take them right so these were our general uh, pre-market plan and then we have uh, we have our daily levels we create these daily levels so we can trade based upon these support and resistance pivots so using ripster ema clouds to go long and short either you're trading stocks or options in addition to that we also share crypto levels for coin um, mstr all the crypto stocks and we also have our day to day three strategy these are the specific uh, you know trade setups that i you know i um, uh, i this is a strategy that i invented where we focus on um, you know recent movers you know recent movers and we try to capitalize on that for example chipotle was a good recent mover there that was um, that had this was a day three and that had um, you know news so there was that of course uh, victoria secret was a day two setup as well so this is a different kind of setups day two day three setups but we give this plan the whole plan to everyone in the pre-market we always provide also provide the low float game plan um this was a low float game plan so uh Today there were a few plays. There was a CD uh, which kind of did not work. We had, I mean, it kind of worked for scalps, but we'll talk about it. And then we had um, uh, the main play of today that triggered was CING. So we'll talk about those. I'm um, I'm usually on voice first few hours of the market open and uh, you know guiding the community through the the what the market is doing are we bullish are we bearish what is our general bias for the market what is short what is long what trade are we going to take based upon those you know what parameters are triggering what kind of uh, setups are we looking at so basically i'm on the voice guiding the community through but i still have a lot of commentary that goes on my alert feed uh, which i will show you the timestamp comments on any trade ideas or setups that i discuss uh, um, of course i cannot share what i talk on the voice but anyways um, that's in enough for the introduction let's start with the first play so all right guys uh, let's start with the spy and qqq the general market 
So let's see, um, you know, we can we can look at SPY futures or even we can look at uh, SPY itself, S&P, or even if we can look at SPX index, it doesn't, doesn't really matter, right? We can look at any of these, but the key thing to note here is when the trend changes, right? You can clearly see when the trend was changing right here. Based upon our system, this is the first signal of trend changing because 5, 12, 12 EM is, is turning bullish. And then around this time right here, yesterday we changed over the the uh, 50 EMS, right? So the power of 50 EMS. So, so when this happens, when we, when this move happens, the 50 EMA, which is when, or, you know, I mean, I don't use SMA, most of a lot of industry uses SMA. And anytime we are over that, you know, we know that we are in the bullish, you know, bullish territory, right? So you can see SPY, we are looking at SPY. So we are over that bullish phase. We are back from the lows where we were at the lows let's see where we were we were at um, let's see so we have bounced at least eight percent from the lows so we have um, you know bounced that much um, where we were earlier from 510s all the way to 553s you know we are not and even the 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 highs we are only like uh, let's see how far we are we are only like two percent on the spy from the all-time highs from where we came down so we have recovered most of the damage on the market although the stocks are still uh, behind looking at qqq so what really changed on qqq same thing right so we are up on qqq we have moved from uh, we have moved 12 percent up from the lows and we still have some room to go on qqqs which is very possible we can get back up there before the rate cuts at um, you know we are still down six percent from there so anyway so what changed today right so we will look at that so of course i'm showing you that when we, we move over this area or 20 ema 12 ema or 50 ema so that area tells us we are in the bullish bullish wave um if you look at if you look at the one hour emas or one hour mtf clouds so we can see that spy had turned bullish many days ago over one hour mtf clouds so since then we have been strong so you know that's another swing strategy you can you can use if you want to use one hour charts but few days ago was when spy actually moved uh, over 20 and 50 am so that's when the real bullishness kind of conforms you know these are like good strategies i probably will do a, a full webinar on this and we will cover cover all this um, in that webinar but anyways so we are bullish we were bullish now we every day there's a macro data we are looking at macro data qqq pushed over that today as well um in the pre-market we in the pre-market qqq pushed over that uh, 50 em as you could see that right we pushed over this right here boom right that was the breakout so today it was the retail sales so today uh, you know um so why did we run today so run we while we know the rates are coming but there was a there was a market was spooked spook that we might get recession right if if the if the sales are slowing down you know if um the the the, the companies the, the the market the retail they're not selling stuff right it's for industry to economy to thrive the those who build products are, should be able to sell and sell good sea profits and the, you know the jobs should be more the jobs should be increasing the salary more people should have the jobs so that's how the ecosystem work for a strong economy so while we were trying looking for rate cards right we were when we look for the rate cards we want to see that economy kind of slowing down a little bit right where we see that the jobs are you know more people are losing the you know um, their jobs so then they can cut the rates right so it's it's just a balancing act but when the economy weakens too much then you know uh, it can go to the recession right so you just understand the point how we're trying to do is this so the fed is trying to you know keep the rates high so that when you keep the rates high you know it will impact the economy the borrowing cost of the companies you know um, the purchasing the purchasing power of the power of power of people so the so, so that the Fed tries to, so Fed tries to um, lower the inflation by increasing the rates. But if the rates stay up too long, then it can impact, you know, it can impact uh, the the overall economy. 
because if the rates are too high, the, you know, it ultimately impacts the consumer's ability of spending their money. So consumers don't spend their money. The corporates will not be able to sell. The corporate will not be able to make money. And of course, the corporate cannot borrow money because the rates are high. So at the end of the day, it will, will have a big, big overall, uh, you know, chain reaction, which will weaken the market and we will go to the recession. So that's where we were right now that... You know, we are, that's, what, that's what they are calling it, soft landing, hard landing. So now we are looking at soft landing because, because the uh, retail sales are good. So retail sales came out good. That means an American consumer is strong. So there's no really worry of a recession. So that's why market liked it. And, you know, and we won't really need too many rate cuts. One rate cut in September should be enough to manage the inflation, to make a balancing act. No recession, every, everybody happy, inflation will come down, Fed's work is being done. A really nice little soft landing there. So that's the overall picture, you know, if it makes sense to you, what's happening and why the market was strong today, right? The, we saw the PPI was bullish, CPI was bullish. Now that was okay. Inflation was coming under control, but we had recession fears. Now recession fears are out of the way because retail is strong right so so that's overall bullish we do not have iran israel war issues as well we do not have yen carry trade issue as well so there's nothing for no excuse for market to not push right the investors you know push come in they you know put their money in and they buy the stuff up so that's why the spy overall the market was bullish right so we talked about this that's why i'm in the first in my game plan was that recession fears ease that's why i talked about in our game plan so that means fundamentally macro macro wise we are bullish so we are going to be bullish today we already know that now technically how would we long what will our system tell us that's where our system cam comes into um, perspective right we watch our system you know intraday technical system because the trading investing consists of macro earnings and the technicals so we already talked about the macro now so the macro we know that our system has, you know, based upon our systems, our levels, our pivots. So you can see these are spike QQQ levels that are provided, uh, provided 550, five, 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 470. Uh, um, you know, those were our two resistance pivots. As soon as I see the market pushing out of those levels, you know, I say that it's a confirmed long. So market is confirmed long. And in our community, we have our daily watch list. We have our marketplace, big seven, Tesla, Apple, Meta. Then we have all of our semiconductor plays. And that's why we have the levels for each, each setup. We have the levels, right? I provide the levels for every semiconductor, every mega cap, so that we can trade those day in and day out. And we know that how much we sold off so there's always opportunity there especially day like today so anyways we talked about the macro we talked about how macro is bullish and then technical bullish confirmed right in the morning then came 10 a.m the 10 a.m pullback came but guess what it held 10 a.m pullback held and market continued to push and all day long there was spy qqq long on your calls either you were trading leverage etfs that's how we were long on the market spy qqq you know there was this sell off where we did cut i think but it was reclaimed and my my members know that all my followers know that there's a strategy when there's something reclaimed you get back in so spy became strong again you could trade a scalper strong again but this move on spy and this move on qqq gave us the confidence to go long on what was strong in the mega caps or the go long in the semiconductors so that's what we're going to discuss next so so nice little winners of we were green all on the community on spy qqq but let's talk about the semiconductors right so we now we talked about how the macro was bullish the technicals were bullish the overall indices were confirmed bullish at the open as you see my time stamped comments here now what's happening with the semiconductors so guess what we were long semiconductors soxl we were long on that, you know, and this is the idea I shared on Twitter, so I'm not going to go back as well. So we were long on semiconductors for this very reason. And now today, the semiconductors moved over 20 EMAs, right? You see, you see that. That's a big pivot. That's a multi-time frame clouds right here. So semiconductors was long all day. So we could literally, we could literally long any of the semis today. AVGO, semiconductor from the watch list. What was the level? Let's look here. AVGO. Our level was 
right so that was a good one then there was asml which was over the 20 ema cloud going towards the 50 ema clouds those 910 calls went 100 percent that was asml then there was amd you know we'll talk about amd separately we'll see how that one worked then there was nvidia or you can just buy xo excel which we were long in on the swing as well as on the trade trade i told everybody right in the morning that xo excel will is going to make next leg up 40 was the target i gave everyone and even this morning the soxl went from 37 bucks all the way to 40 40 bucks the swing we started if you go to my swings here you know we started in 30s with 28 stops is you know already up 25 percent here more than 25 percent so so that's how we could long everything that's how you know we were long soxl that community was long soxl or you were long the other other semiconductors that we're going to talk about here so i want to talk about amd first i specifically first want to talk about amd because uh, you know amd again market is bullish semis are bullish we just need to take an entry so what were our levels on amd here so remember was on amd it were 143.48 and 143.90 so you see that a dip here and once you see this spy swipe this confirms your long on AMD and that confirms on you see how I mentioned that once it's swiped back over the long over MTF this is your stops right here and you long it all day my target I was giving was 148 I think and that's where we met on AMD so that was AMD there and similarly was it was Nvidia so Nvidia again let's look at our levels here and uh, the NVIDIA levels were 1950, 120. And once it was cleared that, once that cleared that 1950, it confirmed the long with your stops low of these candles. And that was the long all day on NVIDIA as well. Right, so so we know the market is strong. We know the semis are getting flow, and and our technicals are telling us to long the Nvidia. I gave the 122 target, and I told everybody to hold it. You can see the breakout on Nvidia right here. 195 that was my alert that i sent to everyone to long nvidia and the video went from 123 um, you know one this breakout that i mentioned all the way to 123 right so those were our uh, you know winners on um, specifically on amd and nvidia so that's how you know that's how you know they ask me hey rip how how is how are we all uh, you know how are we all uh, you know that um, every day we have so many winners because our system works we work with the system right we we analyze them are nobody in the community was short anything and i tell you what a lot of people around a lot of other communities you know um who might be short trying to short the market because they just think oh too high too high too high we're going up 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 right so all right um let's now look at impact of today's uh, you know good retail sales data on M amazon firm and all those stocks so stocks like amazon you know we talked about in the game plan today in this morning that uh, amazon um, you know amazon was also walmart had good earnings as well right so amazon was that sympathy play as well but talking about the retail that let's look here so a lot of these stocks like AFRM, Target, Walmart, Costco, Amazon, all of these names, you know, benefit from this uh, good uh, good economy. Because if, if it's good economy, more buying power, retail will buy, you know, buy more. And the stocks like Amazon benefit from it. You know, Walmart benefits from it as well, but Walmart already gapped up so much. Never really gave us opportunity to long, um, but the, you know there are other stocks you know which can benefit. Which you, you know Target was of course gapping up, but it does benefit. You know Costco, all these stocks it rallied after later in the day. So there are other stocks as well like TJ Maxx, you know which which ran end of the day, uh, Ross stores. So you see that you know the impact of one. Like macro data on all of these stocks you know we were mostly long amazon did not trade any anything else but we were long amazon if you want to see why amazon was along you see it was over the mtf daily 20 ema clouds and then we also see that amazon was clearing our levels of 175 20 and then it finally cleared over one level of 176 right so all day there was a trend and even when it pulled back after this initial breakout it held and rallied all day you know do like amazon uh, daily chart as well it's in the gap it should you know push more higher into that gap so okay let's look at the next one 
All right, the next one we're going to quickly look at is SMCI. So let's see what's going on with SMCI. So SMCI was already, you know, we already having our swing because since SMCI turned over the one hour clouds, you see that, right? You see that why it was a swing because you see that when this one hour clouds change, that's where we longed it the other day, right? And this was our one hour clouds on 10 minute chart and it pushed over, if it pushed over, and that's where we were long. And then I did tell everyone in the swing as well that I'm going to swing it uh, versus that 520 and never broke, never really broke the one hour clouds. That was an intraday short here on SMCI, but the swing was still on. And today, finally, with the good data, market bullish, you know, we zoned in on SMCI yet again. So let's see. Because we always focus on the semiconductors, because semiconductors are always going to lead the market, especially if the rate cuts are coming and the economy is doing good, the semiconductors are going to lead it, right? So what were our levels on SMCI? Our two breakout levels were 590 and 586.91. So as soon as the market opens, I see this, I see this, I see the dip, I see the dip, and I see the rip. I see it breaking those two pivots I gave, right? It breaks those two pivots. And that's when I tell people that the swing is going to 600, right? Of course, we trade long based day trade long as well. And then I gave my 600 target, we met it, and it was strong, and it was a 600 breakout. Then 610 next target, you know, that met. Then, um, then I talked about this curl midday. This was a midday setup. You always ask me what is a midday setup. When you get these kind of candles on a big run, your stops are here, you take long here versus 600. So basically it was a 600 psychological retest. So then that breaks out of SMCI, you know, that 600 level breaks out and then it pushes higher. Um, you know, I did sell some of my swing onto 620s, but I again told everyone that it's still flagging, right? That's the 1252 and it was still flagging. This was my flag alert right at 620.24. And from there, my target was 635s and 640. And did we, we did hit 635 and that was a lot of big move. I think that was 111% of ATR. We always use ATR to trade. On this move on SMCI, these 600 calls went from like five bucks all the way to like 25, 30 bucks, like, you know, 400, 500% big winner. So you have to capitalize on days like today. So you can see my timestamp guidance here. Um, you know, uh, and I'm very proud of my traders. They literally nailed this trade. You know, there was a person, even my Twitter followers, who was who like recovered his two month losers with one of this SMCI trade. It's not a big, but not about the alerts. It's about the system. You know, of course, I guide the community through it, but most of my traders are already having the positions in it. They already know the pivot levels. They already know the concepts of the amateur move, and uh, you know the breakout. And you know that that's you just have to be patient. Wait how the market reacts. If you really see that SMCI just fill the gap, back down and swipe back up to give us a nice confirmation on the long side. So that's how we could, you know, have this long on SMCI. If you waited 10 minutes, amateur move, you made, did really good there. All right, let's look at the next one. The next one we had on our plate was Ulta. So Ulta was gapping up, you know, you know, the, the Musk, uh, not the Musk, uh, the Warren Buffet added a big chunks. Nobody wanted Ulta before that. When he wanted the chunk, everybody, um, you know, um, uh, wanted it, right? But the thing was, what was our plan? Our plan was on Alta 362 was a support, resistance was 372. I knew if it breaks 362, we might get some gap fill. Resistance was 372. When the market opens, I see this weakness breaking under the 3450 clouds. I tell everyone we can short it, right? We can short it. So we short it, right? 368s and 370s. And then my first target is 360. And then 360, I say 360 big buyer is holding up right here. And we do get the 6, 360 flush. We will go to 358, make a little bit more money on the short side, but then it reclaims that 360. And then the new buyer comes at 358 because we are watching the level two, the tape, the book map. So that was our warning to start covering, right? We had nice eight to $10 short here. And um, I did give a lot of people warning. I said, 
covered. You see here I say I'm covered. Buyer not giving up. Close over 512. You can also close here. Doesn't really matter. We already made up our money. You can use the risk level as a C minus long. But the real long would come after we get confirmation from the system. And there was not really, I didn't personally long. I know Vin was long. He was watching it. And when we had this 358, 360 level, he kind of longed it um, for, uh, you know, seven, eight points. But, uh, you know, I didn't personally long it. It's, it went into this chop, 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 chop mode and never even really even gave us a breakout. But anyways, um, that was the trade on Alta. We'll keep watch tomorrow. Alta is not done. Tomorrow is a lot of Friday. Who knows? Maybe Alta pushes over this MTF clouds and gives us, us a nice trade tomorrow. All right, let's look at our next one. So next one today was our Tesla, right? So again, the market is bullish. And what was our pivots on Tesla? Let's go back and take a look at our pivots on Tesla. Let's see. So our pivots on Tesla were 205, 19 and 208, right? The first pivot is always the pre-market high, right? So let me show you here. So you see that that's the first pivot. And in the pre-market, we pushed over the one hour clouds. So you see that there are two alerts, two bullish alerts. There was a pre-market alert. You see here when we push over the one hour MTF clouds and then we are breaking over this pre-market high. So I told everyone it's a breakout long you know and then we push higher at 10 a.m we are doing this flag setup and then there's an mtf breakout you can see that even from that breakout alert the tesla went on to go to 216 so from over 205 to alerts there was almost almost you know eight to nine dollar share per profit to be made on tesla and um it was all because it turned. It was all because it turned bullish versus this 200. It was bearish as long as it was under 200. But once it came over 200, it was a bullish rate, right? So you can see that we had a clear levels and had a clear guidance. And you know, I try to you know, there's so many tickers running today. Um, I try to guide through all of them. You know, I personally can't trade every, everything. You know, SMC was a good one for me. Alta was a good one for me. But I still try to show the traders the setup and why we are longing. And of course, nobody's shorting anything, right? In the community, nobody's shorting anything. And if you have any problem with the 10 minutes, you can always go to three minutes and see how the three minutes are looking to give you a better look. But the first trade is always this, this morning amateur breakout. All right, let's look at our one of our mega winners today. That was ASTS. So ASTS was a big, big winner. So let's see how it was. So first, let's lo go look at the, the daily chart on ASTS. So ASTS is a small float and it's a daily chart. It was interesting. All time highs, no resistance coming up there. It's flagging and you know and there's a nice breakout here as well on the daily chart and then there's an all-time high breakout the weekly chart is beautiful so it's a high probability a plus long setup and we had it on our game plan on asts breakout over 22 23 i already told everyone in the pre-market that breakout is over 22 23 because i looked at the daily chart i knew there's going to be a good breakout if it doesn't break that, we are not going to long. As soon as I see that breakout, which I already gave the plan to everyone in the community in the pre-market, that's when I told everybody breakout long. And after that, it was all about riding your, you know, if you have 1,000 shares, you sell 300, sell 200, sell 200. And by the time it's hitting, you're out of all your shares, you buy the lot of puts. So our long was from this 23, 23 level. And then we went all the way to our 30 target. You can see my there. And when we hit 30, I told everyone you can use, now you can use your profit to either buy the 40 cents, 35 lotto or 31 lotto for a dollar. Let's say you made $3,000. You just buy $500 worth of lottos. And guess what? 35 lottos went on to go 200%. 31 lottos went on to go to 200%. Uh, so that $500 that you used from your morning profit, you know, went on to give you $1,500 back. So that's the kind of trading and setups you, you could do. And still squeezing. And it can very well squeeze, still squeeze uh, tomorrow over 35s, right? So uh, it has history of running up. It has run up. It was a two dollar stock. It's at thirty two bucks, and you know these are the opportunity. You know you don't even need to be an investor. You know even like day trades like these, you know, can change your you know make for the whole month and week. 
we all we always look for these opportunities so anyways you can see the timestamp guidance um, you know this is like a month changing um, trades these are like real real account changing trades beautiful trade in the community today all right, let's look at our now some of our next other trades today. Uh, DE, uh, John Deere, it's always a good stock. You know, it. Uh, I was looking at is the, the past earnings. You know, and um, many times I've traded it. John Deere has provided our good opportunities. You know, I still remember one of the earning plays. It kept on running days after the earning. This earning it ran a lot. So I always look at how the stock did in the past earnings. So, anyways, what was the plan on John Deere? The plan on John Deere was. Um, bullish bias versus cloud too long 355 was a support 361 was pivot and john deere just pushed out of those 360 pivot right out of this mtf 20 ema towards the multi time frame 50 ema right so even if you did not get the john deere in the morning right but this setup right here that was another entry on john deere right here and then the mtf breakout and that was the 512 curls that i mentioned at 10 20 28 a.m. Then there was MTF test right when it breaks out of the order and it continues to push John Deere all the way to 378. Right, beautiful trade in the community. So, this is the kind of the setups that you need to focus on and make sure you see them when they provide an opportunity right here. Right, so you see this, these kind of opportunities. So there were some other winners. I mean, Dell and Micron. I have been talking about Dell and Micron for a long time. You know, I can probably show you that as well. Um, you know, how the Dell and Micron. Um, I've been also talking about how the Dell and Micron are great swings because um, those stocks are really, especially Dell. I mean, I'm a big fan of Dell. So you can see that we have been talking about Dell since it's been selling off. I was talking add to your shopping lists and still has more room and then they finally start hit here they make a base here that's when i say they're testing the low holding the base and then they started to move dell was in the gap yesterday and micron was up as well and from yesterday's mention we got even a higher move on dell and micron anyways so that was my twitter swing idea um you know let's look at what was our day trade today on dell so day trade today on dell was simple it was mtf it was breaking the multi time frame ripster ema clouds that was a long we had on our game plan as well let's look here so i had dell top pick by jp morgan when jp morgan says something you will always take it seriously bullish bias on the pullbacks 105 was a pivot 107 was another pivot and you see that where it pulled back the candle pulled back to 105 held it breaks mtf continues to run towards 110 beautiful you can see my alert at 10 a.m so beautiful winner in the community still love them for swing any pullback is a good ad for swing it's just a beautiful setup dell is uh, it's an opportunity you know i mean so when you see that something is uh, like dell is what was it down like 50 percent yeah i mean look at this you know so that that was that's a beautiful dell beautiful opportunity all right, let's look at Baba now. So what was Baba doing? Not not always my favorite stock, but it was kind of, uh, gave us a nice trade at open. Nice, nice push at open. So let's look at the Baba plan. The Baba plan was simple. Uh, 77 was support, 78.50 was resistance, only long over the MTF and 10 minute clouds. So as soon as it starts to push here, you see this MTF 20 EMA, that's the long trigger. This is where you take long, 78.50s, you take it long towards 82s. It was kind of setting up for a breakout, then it failed. So, you know, stop out when it breaks here, uh, close in the money, still a decent winning trade. So there was another trade that didn't really work that well. Um, you know, that was JD. So JD was another trade which I was looking for a continuation. It was uh, our plan on JD was simple. Watch the pullbacks to hold for the long 2750 and 2640 were support pivots. So that's fine, right? I mean, I you know I did mention everybody JD confirmed long. It did push since I mentioned it pushed a little bit, but then it pulled back, added more, didn't hold, and then it pulled here and then it went sideways. And you know I just got it. Took a you know 20 30 cent loss. It's not worth it. So you know it's uh atr is low that's another problem it's just to uh, 80 cents atr not enough atr so um so yeah i mean that was our jd trade kind of was working at the open but then failed pretty bad 
there was another penny stock we which was watching not really a low float because the 500 million float um warren buffet bought bunch of it i think he increased his position by 200 percent but it is a such a humongous float like 600 million in the float and so much pressures on the option this thing doesn't even move i mean i had long at the open and then it pushed towards 325 i was up like 20 cents I didn't I didn't see it to lock profits and it pulled back gave it more time pushed rejected again and finally broke the MTF cloud and just took a loss and move on I mean long term you know it's still like a 20 cent risk maybe it goes to 14 maybe it runs tomorrow so we have to keep on watch you never know these things may run you know if it's not running today you know um, it can run tomorrow it can definitely give you 20 30 40 cents you risk 10 cents so uh, today loser is fine but tomorrow might be okay we'll see right so it's it's weird you know a warren buff <laughs> the alta goes so much this doesn't because a huge float can't do much about it all right let's look at the next one next one we are going to talk about is boeing so boeing was uh just beauty right i've been talking about boeing that's a good chart good swing as well I'm just going to go to show you the levels. So Boeing, the levels were 170, 50, 172. A lot of traders in the community were trading Boeing long today. You can see everybody was on Boeing. Uh, STS was on Boeing. ALK has been talking about Boeing since morning. A uh, lot of traders were on Boeing. Just Winder was on Boeing. So Boeing, it, it's, it's, it's a great play. I drew this on the live platform this morning. I was talking about this uh, this chart this setup this is what i was sharing with i mean this is a beautiful this is one of those little reversal range reversal setups that we play that i teach boeing was one of those setups beautiful beautiful setup just quick just quickly going through meta meta was the same thing but meta was the strongest in big seven it had a lot of flow 530 to 50 was resistance that i gave 534 was another resistance once it broke out of the resistance there's no looking back right once you see this candle use this candle low as your risk two dollar risk and you know it gave you six seven dollars a beautiful trade let's look at one of our low floats today so one of the low floats we were trading in the community was cing Singh. i gave this low float in the pre-market as well pre-market game plan the setup that i was sharing on Singh was uh, let me see if i can show you so i was interested in this setup on Singh. And that's what we were talking in the uh, low float room all day today. We were all over Singe and uh, CING. You can see my guidance, all my guidance here. I'm interested in four holds. You see this this setting up. So that's where I took entry at the four bucks with my sub, you know my stops at three eight nineties. That was like a ten cent risk. But first breakout, you know, I take off 40, 50 cents. Then second breakout over six, I take out more than a dollar. So risking 10 cents, you're making dollar. That's a beautiful risk reward. You can see my timestamp comments here. If you want to learn more about my low float setups, you make sure you, um, you know, watch my um, uh, low float webinar in the community. But, uh, you know, this is, it's more about the understanding where the buyer are. You know, it goes up, goes up, comes down, holds goes up comes down holds you know that this level is point of interest and when you see this chart patterns this really work nicely on these low floats and penny stocks you see this downtrend line you know tight triangle so you know that it's it's um, you know it's it's a nice setup and then it breaks out of that that's good then it makes another kind of a cup you know you can call it even if you know you can draw some more patterns there as well you know you can call it like kind of a rough cup and handle you know even that was kind of beautiful setup there so this was another winner in the community cing also shared the game plan on the twitter in the morning anyways guys uh let's uh, let's talk about last one then we'll close it so last one i want to talk about is chipotle cmg so cmg what did it do today it moved over the one hour clouds and then it moved over you know they continued to push it was a day three setup we always talk about this 50 psychological level cmg was the most guidance today by was was by rgv he was uh, on top of cmg all day you can see his guidance starting from right from here right you can see the guidance what a guidance you can see the complete chart how it's pushing 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 you know you can see that you know maybe i can show you in a bigger here so let's see if i can show you that 
So this was our day to setup. It was on our day to day three list. And you know, I, I love Chipotle. If you've been watching my videos, you know, uh, 52 was the breakout level right here, 5203 is Chipotle. And you could see that how it ran, right? So that was our uh, setup on uh, Chipotle right here. Oh my God, where is it go? Yeah, so right here. So you can see that the life history of this Chipotle breakout, just beautiful. One by one, one, two, goes, goes, goes. Great, great trader. Love it. RGV doing great job in the community. All right, guys. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.